Hello everyone, my name is Lance. This is a video on network technology in agriculture. Um, I'm going to cover a little bit of background, a little history on how networks kind of have, have developed over the years and uh, how we got from where we were to where we are today, what options we have. Uh, in, in the general world of networking, not ag specific, but just networking in general, there's three main topology types, bus, ring, and star. And the difference between them is, in a, in a bus environment, you've got just a, a single media, and that may be a coax cable or a twisted pair or whatever. And off of that media, there are various nodes connected to it. Um, typically in a bus, in order to get any decent speed, there has to be a terminator on each end of that bus. Um, you can kind of think of that a lot like when you talk in a room with uh, hard walls, you'll end up with an echo off of the walls or something like that. Um, the, instead of sound echoing off a wall, the electrical signals will, will also echo off the ends of a wire and, and reflect and come back down that wire a second time. So that's bad because then you can't figure out if you're hearing that message the first time or the second time or what's going on. So terminators are like a little resistor on the end that just absorb that, that voltage and uh, kind of like the uh, foam wall would absorb sound in a, in a room or something like that. Um, a ring is similar to a bus except there's no end. There's just a, a single media and nodes that connect all along that ring. Um, they, they do something typically a little different in the ring where they have an electronic token that uh, they pass along between various nodes. That's kind of common in the, in the realm of token ring, which is an old network technology used like 15 years ago in business. It was pretty common back then, but it's since died out. Um, it's been replaced by Ethernet, which is a star-based network. And, and I mean Ethernet as in your conventional twisted pair Ethernet that, that you have throughout 99% of the buildings everywhere. And in that scenario, what you have is a device in the center and things that connect to that. Um, in the realm of your conventional Ethernet, that thing in the center is either a hub or a switch. Uh, hubs were, were an old device that just any, any message that came in on one port got sent back out on every other port. Switches are smart enough to analyze that data and then look at where the destination is and only forward it to that one destination machine. Now, there's benefits and drawbacks to each one of these. The bus is extremely simple to implement and it's really quite resilient too. Um, the unfortunate part about the bus and the ring both is that there's just a single media here. Um, so if any one device is trying to like, talk to another device extensively to the point where they saturate that link, that's going to, to impair any other pair of devices from communicating with each other because the link is just simply busy. Um, you can think of it a lot like a party phone. Um, back in the old days when they had phones that had like 10 houses connected to one line, and if somebody was on a call, you couldn't make a call on your own because the phone was tied up. You end up with a, a scenario similar to that here, only it's not 100% loss, it's usually just 99% um, congestion and utilization. But that's still enough to, to cause damage to network traffic if, if a second pair needs to communicate extensively. The, the ring realm was kind of able to overcome that by going to a second ring. Um, if they did the token design, there'd be one token passing this direction and a second token passing the other direction. So data could flow both directions. So any device, like if this device had to send to here, it would send it on this ring that direction. But if this device had to connect to send data to this one, it would send it on the other ring going the other direction. Uh, the dual ring scenario was also popularized by the, the resiliency of that because if, if this link got severed for some reason, like a backhoe or something broke that ring, it would kind of self-heal and, and be able to work around that instead and the, the internet or rings would loop together and it would just deal with that temporarily. Um, usually in the world of data, particularly in backbones where you're dealing with like massive quantities of data between multiple sites, it's really nice if you've got some built-in redundancy there. Even if you don't get full bandwidth, it's better than nothing at all. Uh, the Star Network has been popularized mainly because it's uh, it doesn't have that limitation of a single media like these two do. Um, if you've got this device here needing to talk to this device here, it can do that at the full bandwidth speed and it doesn't interrupt any other links on there. So if this one has to talk to this one as well, these two have the full bandwidth available and these two have full bandwidth available because they don't have to share the same link, such as on a bus or a ring. Um, as far as the resiliency and redundancy goes, there is a, a protocol called Spanning Tree that can uh, be installed on, on some switches that are smart enough to handle that, which is not entirely common, but, but it is a, a, a general industry standard thing these days, where if you have additional switches out here, you can build 
um, a loop, which is normally bad, but if the, the switches are smart enough to deal with that, what they'll do is they'll artificially sever a link. And um, the link is physically connected, it has link light and all that, but, but this link will be down for that duration. So data from these two would have to flow through this one to get to each other. But in the event that either one of these cables comes unplugged or gets cut by a backhoe or whatever, mouse chews it in half, if either of these links goes down, this link will, will then come back up because that way these devices can all get to each other. It's kind of a built-in redundancy that way then too. Um, the major, major, major advantage of the Starbase network is scalability. If you had a thousand nodes on a bus, it would be basically useless because just the, the sheer traffic trying just for a couple things to talk would simply overwhelm the available bandwidth there. Again, if you had a thousand nodes on a ring, that's also going to cause a tremendous amount of congestion, even if you've got a dual ring scenario. But a thousand nodes on a star, particularly in a, especially in a switched environment, you don't have that bandwidth constraint issue because each one of those nodes may be talking to one or two specific boxes, and that isn't going to completely tie up the link, especially if, if you've got a lot of traffic localized to one switch, that traffic doesn't have to be sent to all the other switches on the, on the network at all. Okay, so how does that apply to agriculture? Well, in the ag world, right now we're using ISOBUS to connect tractors and implements together. ISOBUS runs on top of CAN bus, which, as the name implies, is a bus type of network. So, wherever you have a tractor, there is a bus that runs the length of that tractor. And at the end of the tractor, both ends actually, is a terminator. And that terminator has to be smart enough so that if you plug an implement in, to the back of that tractor, that can be extended and then there's a, a, a terminator at the end. So that's great, but there's still that bandwidth limitation that I was talking about earlier, that what if you want cameras and like live video feeds and stuff running from your implement to your display? Well, there's just, there's only so much bandwidth here that's available. So what I'm thinking is, instead of doing a bus design, why don't we go with a star design, where you have a switch on the tractor somewhere, a switch on the implement, and if you've got it implements past that, there may be another switch behind that, or, or you know, whatever, a switch on the thing that's connected to the front of the tractor. And those switches get connected together, but then on that, on that tractor, on that switch, there'd be a, a link going to the display, there may be a link going to the engine, one to the transmission, one to the, the three-point and PTO and stuff. On the, on the implement itself, there's one going to a camera. Um, in the case of an air seater, they may be air control for the, the fan or something like that. Um, some seed drop to make sure that seeds are flowing out the tubes and such. And if you have an additional implement past that, there may be other things back here as well. Now the beauty of this is that you don't have that major, well, A, if you use Ethernet, you don't have the bandwidth issue. But B, you, you've got some scalability that you could run 100 meg links from each of the nodes on there to the switch, and you could run a gigabit backbone back to the tractor cab if you wanted some full speed streaming video and stuff. So, I don't know, it's just, just an idea I've been throwing around. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't.